Hello. Hi. Not in New York anymore. We're not in New York. Is this the first time you've been in a video since New York? What are we doing? I'm getting a proper bike fit. I don't fit any of my bikes. Well, <laughs> my one bike, but I don't fit. And you're too small. So I can't ride your bike. <laughs> so good morning. Welcome to today's video. Daisy's been borrowing my eight bar for the last month or so, and it's two sizes too small. Even though I'm only a very tiny bit shorter than her, yes. you have the longest legs in the world. Two inches. Two inches smaller than me. Should we go and pay James a visit? Yes. So we did the festive 500Ks a couple of days back. I've had a bit of rest, but legs are still feeling a little bit sore. It's good to have a bit of a recovery ride. About half an hour each way to bicycle in Richmond. Easy spin, or as easy as you can on the fixed gear up a hill. All right, chopper. Rich. Oh, you on your own here? Yeah. Aww. It's quite nice actually. It's been sad listening to Pink Floyd all day. <laughs> Surrounded by bikes. Serving, like serving customers when they come in. Booked a couple of bike fits, two services, sold some shit. Grew a moustache? Well, I didn't grow this this morning. Shaved yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so the mission of today, find a bike that will fit Daisy. What's the biggest bike here? Please, please, you have said cheese. cheese. So don't fresh squeeze. Oh. Suggers had to cease. Yeah. Well, it's as cold as George's flat down there. Tell my house if fucking boiler's broken at the moment. I've been like refusing to get out of bed. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, the jig is still set up to your dimensions, James. Like, like the position that Francis did for me. Idiot. Just um, set Daisy cell high. <laughs> So because Daisy pretty much has pain everywhere you could have pain on a bike, this might be a good opportunity to go through how to prevent pain on a bike, common pitfalls and the best way to solve them. I think you're the man to help in this situation. Okay. So this is, what is this? Where's this position come from? Fucked out of the air. Have you actually? Yeah. So Daisy gets discomfort, but we know that she's been riding, for a start, she's been riding your bike. She's not been ridden, riding a bike for very long, she hasn't ridden not a huge amount of mileage. So we need to take this into consideration when we're thinking about what bikes you might want to be on. Newer cyclists, generally speaking, I almost always find are better off on something that's more endurance orientated. Mostly because the bike's a bit more stable, it's a bit more kind of placid. You get a lot of consumers who like these aerodynamic race bikes, but frankly, they're designed around 20 year old racing athletes. What oh, day is this? She's so tall. Look at that. It's <laughs> need a new studio. No, I don't. I just need to dig, dig down more. You could shave the ceiling. I can't sit up straight. Well, don't sit up straight. You don't want to bite like that anyway. Pedal hard for me. Like, give it the beans a bit. And what's happened? Break from your hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so the more power you put through the pedals, generally speaking, the less pressure there is through your hands. However, if you're riding really, really heavily and you've still got loads of pressure on your hands, there is something wrong. Uh -huh. So. Well, yeah, not now it's not, but what's comfortable for 30 minutes isn't necessarily comfortable. It has a time value attached to it. What's comfortable for half an hour is necessarily comfortable for an hour or two or three, or 24, however long it took you to ride 500 Ks. 19 hours, mate. 19 hours, yeah. sorry. One of the causes we're talking about, causes of pains, for example. Pain is often some sort of, can be or some sort of misalignment. I mean, in this case, Daisy had been experiencing some lateral pain, pain on the outside of the knee, which in cycling is very commonly misdiagnosed as iliotibial band syndrome. It can be treated in, in some cases, not all. Uh, it can be treated by reducing stance. So you can see that Daisy's knees track inboard of the line. Um, How did you reduce the stance? How can someone do that at home? So you With can, different you, pedal spindle uh, lengths? No, you can do it with the cleat, but it's counterintuitive. So what you want to do is take the cleat, think about the cleat as being a fix and moving the foot around it. All right, so what you're going to move, do is move the cleat, uh, outwards. cleat, move the cleat outwards to underneath the pinky toe, exactly. How did I know you'd put one of these in their shoes? It's pronounced gate, isn't it? Pronounced gate. Actually, a lot of new viewers are not going to know what these are. GA no. insoles, instead of custom insoles, which are difficult. But the problem with a custom insole is that because because this is it's easier to it's easier to apply and equally it's better value for money. People can administer can people can chain where the arch support is literally on a ride. So they're like little dots. The, the other, not sponsored by GA by the way. No we're not. The other thing to to remember about a custom orthotic or a custom insole is it's only as good as the person that makes it. I've removed some appalling examples of custom insoles which I mean to the extent that they've, they've not been 
heated up enough. So no, no you know, I, I, I have the facility to do custom insoles here. I just choose not to. How many people really do you, need you've custom have, insoles? I mean, the, it's relatively uncommon for you, to, for you to need custom insoles. Not outside of the realms of possibility. Rob Quirk. Uh, <laughs> Rob Quirk's just got messed up feet. Though. I've found that we can reduce pressure going through the saddle by a marked amount by administering arch support. Arch support for me is about proprioceptive awareness of the foot, which you lose when you put your foot into a cycling shoe, uh, in any shoe in fact for that matter. But the, the arch support sort of helps re-establish that, that connection. Oh, yeah. It's all about better for cycling mate. <laughs> <laughs> I like how there's Ultegra Di2 shifters on this fit bike. Expensive best taste way. mate. Expensive taste. Well it's not the best is it? It's not Dura Ace. It feels so different. It's like a mould to my foot. <laughs> Right, yeah? yeah? So, kind of reiterating our point about custom footbeds. This is a modular custom footbed, which has several different arch pieces and a number of different combinations uh, within, in which, in terms of where you can place it, both fore and aft, so forwards and backwards, and medial lateral from left to right. So, it's, it's an incredibly effective solution. And understandably so. Mo I, everyone, I, everyone whose shoes I put these, in, these insoles into, everybody loves them. My, my leg is like solid after the 500 k's. For some reason the spiky ball on it. Ow. The spiky ball fell off. Ow. There's a lot of talk about crank from numerous individuals. Now, fortunately, most of them talk about it hypothetically and they don't have the facility to actually test it. I found that going too short in the crank length can actually result in the rider being pitched into the front of the bike or at least having more pressure on their hands. I've only found this through experimentation and you've got to experiment with it. So I guess for the viewers, the thing to take away from this is that if somebody tells you you should try something but cannot test it and quantify it, that should be a red flag. I think there's people who come to me and they, you know, they, they, their coach has told them to take the bike much longer. Why? Usually to make it more aero or well, actually what it does is make it more dysfunctional. You must be able to test things. This is why I work on a gym. Right? Because we can comparatively test things rather than riding using a, a rider's existing bike, which assumes the bike's right in the first place, which, let's face it, very often isn't. Pretty handy way to just crank length. You just code a couple of Allen keys and then pull it. What have you just changed? Because her arms look a million times better. We've got narrower on the handlebar. Uh, and one of the problems with all, almost all of the shaft bikes, in fact, is that the bigger the bike, the bigger the handlebar. And when you look at really tall individuals, yes, you are tall, you're not broad. And again, this is where bike fitting should be about looking at the individual in front of you and also testing things. We fitted a slightly narrower handlebar and Daisy's arms are softened up, so she's been experiencing elbow pain. We don't know for sure until we try it, but you know the fact that the automatic response was, this feels much better, pretty solid foundation to, to make the change, especially given that handlebar width is, reduction is not a very expensive change to make, 20, 30 pounds. When the bar is too wide, it reduces the rider's ability to reach the brake levers. And if we think about where confidence on a bicycle comes from, I think, I, I think it's fairly accurate to say that your confidence on a bicycle can be directly linked to your ability to stop. If the handlebar is too wide, you're in, you end up basically reaching around the handlebar to get to the brake lever. And it often creates quite a lot of tension in the elbows as well. What's that? It's a bicycle Francis. Have you found a bike that might actually fit her? Yeah, maybe. Ooh, and it's white. Did you want white though? As long as you clean it. <laughs> so three three things that we were concerned about today, weren't there? Um, you know, some knee pain, uh, some foot pain, and uh, some pain in your elbows. So just to recap, the foot pain we've hopefully addressed by cleat location and arch support and, and a little bit of foot activation, so some cleat wedging but, and then uh, a heel driven wedge in both shoes. And mostly to improve stability of the foot and the arch support should help with like, the cramping that you were getting in your arches. Pain on the outside of your knee um, I, remains to be seen but I suspect could have been driven by what was going on at the feet as well but also by reducing the stance, bringing your feet feet closer together to sort of improve that improve that alignment. Finally, the elbow pain, uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty confident that we've nailed that with the handlebar width. Would you end up on a 36 or a 38? 36 bar. 36. Uh, most men measure between 39 and 41 centimeters across the shoulders. Women vary a little bit more actually, uh, but you know, they go down as small as 32, 33, and then up to 37, 38. But that basically omits the need for a 40 centimeter handlebar on any women's bikes. Uh, but when you think that a, most, a standard 
women's bike comes with a 40 centimetre handlebar, which is the bar, bar width that I fit to. And it's always too big. You are cleaning it though. No. Tune. So new bike day for Daisy. When's my new bike day? It's coming soon. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's a feet uh, massager. Oh yes, I feel much better now. Hey man, why are you looking at villia geometries on here? 